Hello everyone. This is group G25 and our CL246 course project is minimizing and modeling car cabin temperature. I'm Sarvari and our group members are Saina, Gautam, Varnika, Athar, Ayushi, Monu and Chinmay. Talking about the user story, we know that the overheating of car is the prevailing problem in summers and when we park our cars in direct sunlight in the afternoons. Sun and heat are a lot more damaging to cars and passengers than what car users think. The interior of the car has been recorded up to 60 degrees Celsius, which is a lot more temperature. The dashboards and the car seats get heated up due to sunlight. It causes thermal discomfort among passengers. It also poses great health risks among passengers due to evaporation of interior materials. The car's interior, finish and engine are also at risk due to UV radiation. The increased AC use causes more fuel consumption and moreover, talking about background and literature, one of the major effects of car overheating are infant deaths in car. On survey, it was found that 38 children die each year from the heat stroke, which occurs from overheating of car. And it is the second leading cause of death in vehicles for children 14 and younger. There was also an article on effects of car overheating by CNN Health and it motivated us to find a solution to this problem. Uh, our technical heat transfer problem is we, we need to experimentally obtain the temperature versus time data inside the car cabin and we need to plot it. We model the obtained data using the heat transfer equations and we achieve consistent results with the experimental graph. We'll compare the rate of temperature rise with time the maximum temperature reached inside the car cabin in both the cases. Find the parameters affecting this temperature rise and vary these parameters so as to obtain the optimized solution to delay the temperature rise inside the car cabin. So our proposed practical solution goes like this. We model the heating up of car cabin using the concepts of heat transfer. Then we'll match the calculated data with the experimental data. We study the effect of various parameters, which include thickness, material, etc. We study the heat transfer modes, the temperature dependent flux, which affects the temperature in the car cabin. And we accordingly suggest optimized values of the parameters so that the temperature rise is delayed. The big picture, as we see here, is the car cabin as a uh, used as the control volume. So this is the whole car and we use the car cabin as our control volume. Now to obtain the experimental temperature profile, we use Elitech data logger device. The device, uh, we calibrated it for every two minutes so that it measures the temperature data in the car cabin automatically. We then place the device in the car at two in the afternoon. The device stored temperature versus time data and a temperature profile was generated for the observed data. This is the experimental temperature profile we obtained by using the data logger device. From this graph, we can observe that the temperature inside the car cabin remains almost constant for initial seven to eight minutes. Then the temperature starts rising gradually in a parabolic fashion, and then we can see that it reaches a constant value thereafter. In this graph, the maximum temperature reached is 40.8 degrees Celsius and the time taken to reach the maximum temperature is one hour. For modeling the temperature variation inside the car cabin, we now use heat transfer calculations. Our governing equation is MCP dt by dt is equal to q dot in minus q dot out. And this is our control volume. There are two control surfaces here. Control surface one is the rooftop of the car and control surface two is glass. Here, all those, uh, all the losses and also the incident sunlight is being, is being shown. The assumptions are that there's a negligible thickness of car. There is no spatial variation of temperature inside car. Hence, we do not account for conduction. Control surface one being the rooftop is opaque. Hence, transmittivity is taken to be zero. Control surface two is glass and hence transmittivity is taken to be one and reflectivity is taken to be zero. Mass and CP for car roughly are, are approximated to be weighted average of the CP of seat and CP of air inside the car. These are the values of the vari variables which are used in our governing equations. Talking about the estimations of heat transfer modes, first we go to the convection. Convection takes place outside the car cabin due to the air 
and uh, the heat transfer coefficient for that is 20 watt per meter square kelvin hence it is a dominant mode of heat transfer and we considered it consider it while writing equations talking about conduction conduction occurs in the thickness of the car roof top but as we have assumed negligible thickness we neglect the conduction radiation occurs as the car rooftop emits radiation and also is a dominant mode of heat transfer now we shall look at the effect of different heat transfer modes on temperature profile we had considered the car cabin as our control volume now moving on to case one we consider only the irradiation and reflection assumptions taken are that there is no loss terms by radiation and convection the g is taken to be constant and the absorptivity of glass surface is zero the governing equation that has to be uh, solved is just an energy balance on the control volume of the car the left hand side mcp dt by dt is the rate of energy change within the control volume and the right hand side are the incoming energy terms on solving this analytically we obtain that the temperature has a linear profile the boundary conditions are that, that the temperature initially is nothing but the temperature of air outside, which is 30 degrees Celsius. On plotting this, we, ob we obviously see that it's linear with a slope 0 0.02816. Now, this is a very crude temperature profile since we have not accounted for any kind of losses. And since we have not accounted for any losses, the temperature just keeps on rising indefinitely. Now, in case two, we also consider the convective losses. You'll observe that in the governing equation, we correspondingly add a convective loss term, which is HAS delta T. On simplifying and incorporating the boundary conditions, we obtain the final equation. And we see that the temperature here in this case varies exponentially with time. And we can, uh, we can see the temperature profile on the left and conclude that the maximum temperature is nearly 45.78 degrees Celsius. And the time required to do so is 63 minutes. Now you'll observe that this temperature profile is quite different from the one that we obtained in case one. This is because convective loss is quite a significant loss term. Now, in case three, we shall consider the emission loss as well. You'll see that the governing equation has an additional term, epsilon AS1 sigma t to the power of 4. Again, simplifying and uh, applying the appropriate boundary condition, we see that the time required to reach the maximum temperature is one and a half hours, and the maximum temperature is nearly 49.53 degrees Celsius. This temperature profile is a much more closer de uh, depiction of the experimental results. However, in the analysis of the three cases that we had, we consider G to be a constant. Now, this is not a realistic assumption. This is because we can expect that during the duration of the experiment, solar radiation flux would have decreased because the sun's rays would, the sun's rays would become more slant and diffused and the intensity would have reduced. To account for this, in case four, we take the solar radiation as a function of time. We take G to be a sinusoidal function of the form A cos Bt plus C. We take the boundary conditions G initially as 1300 watt per meter square, that is during the start of the experiment. And after one hour of the experiment, that is T equal to 3600 seconds, we take the G value to be 1000 watt per meter squares. So in the final equation, we have G of T equal to 1400 cos of 0.0001 T plus 0.38. The leading coefficient here is taken to be 1400. The reason is 1400 is the maximum intensity value that was observed during the day around noon time. But our experiment time was from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So it accounts for that. Now, the governing equation, you'll see that G has been replaced by this function of time. 
and you can see the usual convective and radiative loss terms. Again, this is not solvable analytically, so we resort to MATLAB's inbuilt OD45 solver to obtain the temperature profile. We can see that the temperature profile of this kind is obtained. The maximum temperature reached is nearly 41 degrees Celsius, and the time required to do so was nearly half an hour. This temperature profile is a much more closer and uh, a depiction to reality. Let's have a look at how different parameters influence the temperature profile inside the car cabin. The parameters are as follows. Absorptivity of carbon, that is alpha. MSVT of carbon, that is epsilon. Effective specific heat of car cabin, that is C. Now, by looking at these graphs, we see that maximum temperature reached inside the car cabin decreases if the emissivity is increased, but it also decreases if the absorptivity is decreased. As we saw, the role of car paint is significant in varying maximum temperature. We can say that this temperature can be reduced by using light colors due to their low absorptivity and high emissivity. Coming to the effective specific heat of the car. As we vary the specific heat of the car, we see that maximum temperature attained decreases as specific heat increases. Temperature profile becomes flatter at higher values of Cp, which explains the delay in reaching maximum temperature. Temperature also stays low for a longer period of time. After studying the influence of Cp in maxima, maximum temperature attained, we can see that to achieve minimum temperature and increase the delay in temperature rise, it is needed that the material does not retain heat. So use of fabric material for car seats is suggested such that passengers do not get uncomfortable in summers due to heated seats. Now let's have a look at PCMs. PCMs or phase change materials are substances which absorb or release large amounts of latent heat when they go through a change in their physical state, that is, from solid to liquid and vice versa. When installed into rooftops of the car, they are able to trap the heat coming from outside. Due to their high heat of fusion, they melt and solidify at a certain temperature, and overall, this slows down the process of rise in temperature. As you can see, through these graphs that the PCMs are significantly able to decrease the temperature in car cabin. The graph shows two results for temperature profile, one with PCM and one without PCM. Now we move towards the conclusion of this project. We firstly model the, model the obtained experimental temperature profile with fair approximations. We used different heat transfer modes and the governing equations along with the combinations to reach at certain conclusions. We also model temperature variation with respect to time using time independent cosine function of solar radiative flux. We saw the influence, we saw the influence of various parameters on temperature profile and obtained optimized values for them. Using lighter paints and fabric materials were seen as effective solutions. We also saw how use of phase change materials was highly effective solution to trap heat and reduce temperature inside car cabin. Thus, our project suggests solution has economic and energy ben benefits as we cut down on AC. AC used otherwise for car cooling we save on fuel consumption. Coming to the future work that the team has envisioned. Studying use of automatic temperature controlled exhaust fans to reduce the parked car temperature. Study of feasibility of a coolant system running through the frame of the car. Use of simulations for modeling cabin temperature in different environmental settings. Cost benefit analysis of the use of PCMs over a long period of time, typically over the lifetime of the car. Thank you.